Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Death Trick Double Blind. Now, big revelations then to the last one. We now believe that, uh, or I believe anyway, <laughs> that Detective Jones and Jackie are not actually operating on the same game day, which is rather interesting. Um, Jackie has just been captured, or hit over the head at least, by the person who sent the note. That's all we know. Is it the killer? Probably. I guess we don't know that for certain. Um, but yeah, uh, going back to Jones now, and it looks like the big performance on his day is starting, because that happens at the same time every day. Um, let's dive in and see where this takes us, shall we? The performance is starting, and it seems like everyone in the circus will be busy. I have no one to talk to at this time. Aimless for the first time yet. Sorry. <laughs> Aimless for the first time, yet acutely aware of the clock ticking. I might as well make my way to the big top and watch the big show unfold for a bit. As I enter the room... The seats are already packed full of eager fans, and the spotlights and drumbeats are announcing the start of the performance. Someone steps out from behind the curtain. It's Chip, dressed in the ringmaster's outfit, complete with top hat and cane. Hello, hello, hello to the circus. I'm your ringmaster, Chip, and a night of extraordinary sights await. Now, esteemed guests, please say hi to your performers tonight. First up, our phenomenal puppeteer, Echo. And the astonishing acrobat, Yan. Uh oh, do you hear the footsteps? Here comes our beloved beast team, Rolf. Uh oh, who's there with the elephant? It's our fabulous fire dancer, Miss Aideen. Now, get ready for a journey. To see the wonder of nature with these strange beasts from all over the world. And to witness unimaginable feats of human excellence. And perhaps something a little magical. He drags the word out, intentionally testing, teasing the crowds. They go wild in anticipation. I can hear frantic whispering among the two men sitting in front of me. Something magical. What's that supposed to mean? Man, didn't you hear? The amazing Hattie's back. What? Isn't she missing or something? I saw it in the papers. No, she's back. What? How do you even know she's back? You see her or something? Yeah, I was here last night. Last night? I was here three nights in a row, man. They always do the same thing to start, introducing everyone here. The day before yesterday, she didn't show up, so I thought she was still missing. Ah, the day before, so Jackie maybe have done it... Uh, got knocked out on Wednesday then. Which which makes sense. I didn't know for sure it was the day before. All I knew was that it was a day before. So there we go. Then, bam, the last hour of the show yesterday, she shows up out of nowhere. Scared the hell out of me and everyone else. For real? What was she doing then? What's up with all the disappearance shit? Something about, like, an accident? She was dressing different too. Had a mask and stuff. I tune out their voices as I go over this information in my head. The magician Moses hired to play Hattie was here last night. She did not show up during the opening introductions, but she had already done a closing show. The show is still moving forward on stage, with the first act of the night quickly announced and gearing up. But I can't focus on any of it. Everything that happened today is swirling around in my head like a tornado. The attack, my memories, the victim, this replacement, yesterday, today... My head is such a mess that I don't even notice that Chip has re retired from the stage and found me in the back of the room. <clears throat> He's back in his clown costume and holding something behind him, smiling mysteriously. It is so loud in the room that he practically has to shout into my ears. Hey, welcome to the show. What did you think of the opening act? It was great, but uh, I wanted... I don't even know where to start, but he isn't listening. Oh, good. My act is coming right up. I'm sure you'll love it too. I'm workshopping a new character. I think I'm going to call him Chip the Demolition Man. What do you think? 
He winks and pulls out a red and gold hammer from behind, posing to raise it over his head. At the first sight of it, my breath tightens. My heartbeat suddenly speeds up against my will. What is happening? Something feels incredibly wrong. Incredibly right, I can't tell right now. What? That hammer. Think, think. It's a mallet! Can I see it? Of course! He walks closer with the hammer still raised over his head, and oh. Oh no, I'm feeling dizzy. Hey, you okay? What's happening here? Are you allergic to mallets? I can feel the onslaught of a splitting headache. Oh shit, sorry, I mean, that was a bad joke. You look worse. I didn't realize. And everything went dark. I imagine that's the implement that hit us over the head at the very beginning of the game. And likewise knocked out Jackie two nights ago, it seems. Well, this is strange. Oh, good. Oh, is this, so is this Hattie or Jackie? I don't know. I'm going to guess that it's ah, Jackie. Oh, good. You're awake. Where am I? Who are you? You don't know who I am, but I know you. You're the magician hired by Moses to replace Hattie, aren't you? Am I? What does that mean? Oh, my head hurts like hell. And it seems like I have once again woken up somewhere unfamiliar. It sure seems, seems to happen to me a lot. What's the last thing you remember? It was 7pm. The big show was about to open and then Chip came over to show me something. A hammer or a mallet. A hammer? I know that hammer. It was 7pm for me too. I was on the train. Someone was hiding in the shadows. An attack? Could it be the same person? Did they get us here? The attacker pulled out a hammer. I fell. When I fell, I shattered the trophy, the blue one in the shape of a star. You broke the trophy, but something's not right. Uh, we ask her about that? We don't have any AP, or maybe these are AP. We'll see, I suppose. The trophy, yes. Something's wrong with the trophy. When I saw it earlier today, before 7 p.m., it was already broken. How could you have broken it? No, the trophy was intact before I was attacked. Hmm, it must be because... Yeah, you broke it before I ever saw it. I've already figured that out. Yes, that must be it. The glass shards I saw were the trophy you had broken. But I only ever saw it after you had broken it. How could that be possible? You said it's 7pm, right? I just had... Uh, I had just... The attack just happened. Yeah, 7 o'clock on which day? What do you mean, on which day? On which day did you break the trophy? Oh. Oh! Hattie died this Monday, didn't she? Yes, it's Sunday for me, the last day of the performance. Moses said they'll be leaving tonight. Oh, okay, so he's... Okay, so maybe... Because I knew Friday had been mentioned. I'd forgotten who it was mentioned for, but clearly it was for, for Jackie. So she arrived on the Friday, and Jones did on today, the Sunday. It must be some time before Sunday for you. What day is it? I'm not a... Something that was puzzling me before finally comes to the front of my mind. I think I know. You do? Uh, yeah, you were here on Friday. No, no, that's not right. Think about what the f two folks said when the big show started. Yeah, I thought... Sorry, so which day did she do? He said they... She did yesterday, which would have been Saturday. We didn't do Friday. I thought... Oh, I can't remember what they said now. Which day didn't she do? Was it the day before? No, it must have been the day... Thursday she didn't do, then Friday... He said he'd been to three performances. The Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I thought it was the Friday that she didn't do. Um, is it, are they going for the day before? Yes, that must be right. The two people that sat in front of me, they said... How do you even know she's back? You see her or something? Yeah, I was here last night. I was here three nights in a row, man. They always do the same thing to start in. Introducing everyone here. The day before yesterday, she didn't show up, so I thought she was still missing. The day, So that would have been Friday. 
But then bam, the last hour of the show yesterday, she shows up out of nowhere, scared the hell out of me and everyone else. And that couldn't have been Hattie, obviously. The only reason they brought Hattie back on stage was you. But that wasn't me, I was... Someone ambushed me in the train car. It was a trap. The letter they sent me. Yeah, but think about the reason. Why attack you? Could it be they thought they were she was Hattie? Because they thought I was Hattie? So the killer came to finish the job? What sort of murderer doesn't know if they've carried out a murder? Moses and I already established the killer is likely a core member of the circus, which meant they would have known about Moses' plan to disguise someone as Hattie. No, it was definitely something else, something they wanted from you. Okay, to take over the identity then. To take over my identity? Because I had Hattie's costume. That's it. And you didn't just have Hattie's costume, you had the mask too. The perfect disguise. What do you mean? Outsiders who didn't know Hattie was dead will see you as Hattie at the same time. That's right, the people in the circus will see someone in the dress and mask as Jackie. Exactly. It's a double disguise. It was a genius move. You kind of gave them a flawless opportunity. So it's look, we're looking for a, a woman, and an adult woman at that, so it's kind of fingers pointing at Aideen again, isn't it? Hey! Yeah, I did. So it's Sunday already? Then, what happened to me? I didn't die, did I? Unconsciously, I feel my pulse speeding up. Blood is rushing to my head like I'm facing off against my biggest enemy. No, not the killer. My biggest enemy has always been truth that's just out of reach. So close, I could feel the heat of it at my fingertips. After the attack knocked me out, where did I go? What does she mean, where did she go? Crime scene? No. There. Where was Jackie today? Think about what it would have been like. I don't know. <laughs> None of these are locations. Um... is very confusing. Um, train three? Ah, oh, running out of things. What happened last night? The attacker took the costume she was wearing. Um, I... Man, I don't, I don't really get it. What are they asking me to do? After the attacker knocked me out, where did I go? Are they asking me to do this? Yes, it all makes sense now. The attacker needed Hattie's costume so the clothes were taken off her back. And the impact trauma from the hammer or mallet caused amnesia. So-called mind reading. Why someone so conveniently appeared when no one outside of the circus was supposed to know about Hattie's death. Why Moses thought I was late. Wait, but, uh, what about the letter? The letter from Hattie? Where did it come from? It had her signature, didn't it? I can explain that. Oh god, I've only got one thing left. Is that her, is her signature on there? I found a signed flyer in my motel room. I got the flyer so I could copy the, her signature and forge the letter. I remember now, there was a typewriter in my room too. So there was nothing wrong in the circus? Hattie didn't know what was going to happen to her? If I didn't write that, why would Moses ever agree to let someone into the circus? Yeah, why? Why did you? Why did I have to become Jackie? Oh, uh, what's going on? <laughs> Why did I have to become Jackie? Uh, what? 
<laughs> Why did I have to become Jackie? Is it the crime scene? Um... You get what it's asking me. Um... So the circus secrets? Ruth must have told me the same thing about Carnies being guarded to outsiders. I could never resist a chance to go undercover and to stir things up. It was a good plan. Of course, there were plans to reveal Jackie's identity eventually. Only I didn't see the attack coming. And the amnesia. So what now? Hey, someone lay this out for me because I'm a bit confused. Jones and Jackie seem to be the same person, but I'm not quite following the train of events. She's not here. Well, in a way she is here, but she doesn't exist. I am Jackie. Okay, sort events in chronological order. Uh, okay, so he's... I guess that's why he didn't take off the mask then. That's interesting. So that was someone wearing her disguise then. Uh, well, I think the first thing to happen is probably the uh, uh, murder of Jackie, right? Uh, Hattie, right? Then he receives a phone call. I think it's probably the next thing. Um, then he checks in. He checks into the hotel room. Uh, types the letter. Dresses himself up. Adopts an absolutely fantastic Southern Belle accent. Um, shows uh, This is the thing that's confusing me a bit. When does he find the hammer? Uh, but we'll see. So, goes and sees Moses. Uh, as Jackie. Then gets attacked, smashes the thing, uh, wakes up our post attack. And is the hammer the last thing? Because he's back in his detective uniform then. Is that the right thing? We know that's not how she was killed. Oh, so that's why he didn't have his clothes on him, because it was the Hattie disguise. A uh, Jackie disguise. Well, ha Jackie's Hattie disguise. Though, to be fair, if we could wear Hattie's costume, another man could. Doesn't have to mean that it was a woman. I know your secret imposter. Looking for me? Come to train th number three at 7pm sharp. The door will be open. I will be waiting. And if that was me... Jones, Jackie, all me. Then, who was the Hattie I saw at the Calliope? 
It's got, it's got to be the same person. It has to be. Oh, oh, it must be the same person that ambushed me in the train car. The clues are in all in the costume. The hattie I saw was wearing the same costume that I, that Jackie, was wearing, including the boots and the mask. The boots were Alice's new adjustments, and the mask was mine. No way anyone would just have a copy of those lying around. No, they were taken directly from me. And that's why I woke up half naked today. It wasn't because of it was a robber looking for money or because of some kind of evil plot. They did it specifically for the clothes I was wearing and the identity I'd assumed. Whoever puts on this costume and masks shall become the magician known as the Amazing Hattie. So this attacker is probably the killer. Is probably the one who killed Hattie. I can't be completely sure yet, but all the signs point to the same perpetrator committing both crimes. I mean, the note itself even said, looking for me. The logic works. As I told Moses earlier, if the killer had a reason to get Hattie out of the way, that would be a reason to strike against the replacement too. My vision is beginning to narrow. The image of my opponent is becoming clearer and clearer. I can see the shadows coming alive before my eyes. Who am I? I think it's time to come to a conclusion, to answer the last question. Who killed the amazing Hattie? Oh man, <laughs> have I really got to pick one? Uh, I don't know, it could be any of them. Okay, let's run through things here. Aideen, we think her fire art dart uh, was the murder weapon. She was in a relationship with Hattie that Aideen chose to end. That's her story, anyway. She was in a relationship with Hattie. Um, she, she was keeping secret from everyone. Um, could have been an accident? I don't know. Alice was close to Hattie. Uh, was being trained as her apprentice and conceivably this could have been some kind of training accident sort of thing. Chip I guess they're getting at his motive could be the ringmaster thing but I don't really I don't really see that. Echo old jealousies from their training together sort of thing. Equally I don't really get that from him. Moses he wasn't there. Rolf does is, is a gentle giant. I don't I don't think it's him and Yan. For all that it could have been a trick or a prank gone wrong, I don't think it could have been her, just on her sort of size relative to Hattie and, and everything. I, so I think it has to be Aideen or Alice. Um, I wish I'd been able to get Alice's uh, alibi and maybe examine that a bit harder, but we never could get to meet her as Jones. I mean, I feel like I'm just going to flip a coin here. Okay, tell you what. Um, something in my gut is just leading me towards Alice, possibly as an accident and others covering up for her. Let's go with it. It's you, isn't it? Do you have anything to say for yourself? Shadow Alice doesn't speak. She doesn't even look at me. Are you admitting it then? Why? Why do you think it was me? You think you know everything? Uh. Probably not. Uh. I think I know the when. You had the opportunity to do it. I never managed to get your testimony on it, but I think I've pieced it together. Have I? I wish I had... Okay, so I've got more stuff now. Uh... So we're, are we look we're looking for the when. Uh successor. What does that have to do with anything? She bites her lips and croaks. Is that all? Uh, okay, well, let's go to Secret Apprentice then for the why. Hattie was planning to leave the circus, and you were the one she chose to take her place. 
If I were the apprentice, and I'm not saying I am, what does that mean I have a motive? I think counterintuitively, maybe you didn't want her to go. After all, you said yourself, she was irreplaceable, right? No one can separate her from the circus. Not Jackie, the strange magi uh, magician that showed up from nowhere in her costume. Not you, her chosen successor, which must be why you kept saying you were not ready. And perhaps not even herself. You think you understand me? You think I know what I was thinking? You got mad at me for disparaging her act. You clearly had a lot of respect for her. But the circus has been your dream, hasn't it? You ran away from home to come here. I can understand why you would be angry over that decision. That's insane. No one would ever believe that reason. See, now you're trying to tell it slant and... Huh? And claiming innocence. You're saying that you don't think the others will find it credible. What I don't hear is a denial of accuracy or your rage. What I'm saying is, while I'm not sure what exactly happened between you and Hattie, this would certainly explain why you attacked me yesterday. What does it feel like to see someone taking over a role that was rightfully yours? And it would certainly explain how you managed to pull off the show last night. That's a good point. Alice playing Jackie, playing Hattie. She bites her lips and croaks. Is that all? How? I think I know the how. How you could have pulled it off. I don't know. Um... How could she have pulled it off? Um. Oh, because she's... Mm. Could it have been the broken bolt? Could that have been the murder weapon? Jackie fell on to, Hattie fell onto it? What is, okay, no. <laughs> well, that's not enough. I'm not done yet. Alibi, motive, modus operandi. That's only half of it. They are pieces to the puzzle. What more do you want? What I need is a story. What happened? Why did one thing lead to another? Let's start from the beginning. It's Monday afternoon. The circus arrives in Tolji. You and the crew spend the whole morning setting up, getting the animals settled, putting up the storage tent, moving stuff inside. It's probably 2, 2.30 when Moses tells everyone to break for the rest of the day. You go to the room at the back of the stables to rest, as you normally do. Rolf sees you come in. He's busy with his horses. You tell him you're going to take your standard nap. This is what I was thinking. I, well, I, I, I couldn't find in the responses I had available. Maybe because I never got to speak to her and test her uh, alibi. Um, but I, I was looking for a thing to sort of suggest she could have done it or it could have happened at the time she was supposed to be asleep. Because lots of people told us that's what she usually does uh, once the circus has finished setting up. But I didn't have that response. So that was kind of what I was hoping for. And then 3.30 rolls around. Rolf leaves to walk with Aideen. Whether you anticipated that happening or not, you know no one will see you if you leave now, so you leave. You meet Hattie in the storage tent. You must have talked with her in advance, or you had a standing appointment, so she knew to meet you there. You two are doing whatever you do during rehearsal. And then, something happens. Did you know how I got a copy of the- Did you know I got a copy of the autopsy report? Well, it oh so helpfully states that the original murder weapon wasn't the throwing knife. You used something else to stab her and then switched it out for the knife, which tells me two things. One, that it was probably not premeditated, but rather something that happened in the heat of the moment. But what could have happened that caused you to be this upset? The only thing I can think of is Hattie finally told you her plan to leave the circus. It's recent, significant, and personal. The kind of thing that might lead to an argument. You get angry, of course. She's irreplaceable. What is the circus going to do without her? It's a betrayal, plain and simple. But back to the point. The second thing it told me is that you switched it out for a reason. Most likely because it was a telltale sign of your identity. Yeah, she's got the she's got she's got all the sort of handyman tools and stuff, hasn't she? Now, the autopsy reports said the original murder weapon could have been thicker, duller, narrower, or equal in width. And with a longer blade or hiltless. Chisel, maybe? 
You think I've got something like that? I know you have something like that. I've seen it. She laughs a little manically. You have, haven't you? Oh, the scissors. More accurately, Jackie has. You used your scissors, didn't you? She doesn't say a word. You can deny it all you want, but I'd bet my paycheck that any sort of test on your scissors will reveal a lot of bloodstains. That's enough. I'll tell you when it's enough. There's another thing I didn't realize until just now. You see, when I first saw the photo, one thing seemed particularly interesting. Neither the room nor the state of Hattie's dress showed any sign of struggle. How did the killer tie her up without a fight? And I had three theories as to how the killer did it. A. Hattie was tied to the board after her death. B. She was tied while she was unconscious. And C. She was tied up voluntarily. At the time, I thought A was the most unlikely. The blood splatter lingers up. Sorry, the blood spatter lines up perfectly with her position. If she wasn't tied to the board when she was stabbed, why would she be standing in front of it with her arms out? But let's look at the other options. B. She was tied when she was unconscious. Moses confirmed there was no visible head wounds. Guess those are reserved for me. And the autopsy report rules out drugs. C. She was tied up voluntarily, like in some sort of final test for the knife throwing act. But then, thanks to the lovely mirror in the room at that angle, I figured out the board in the room wasn't the one you actually used for the trick, was it? There was no mechanism at the back, and Hattie knew that, so it couldn't have been practice. She would have known that was nonsense. You see, I'm not a big fan of novels, especially detective novels. I am one. But I did read some of them just to see what the fuss was about. And I have to give it to this Doyle guy. His books are pretty good. One quote has stuck with me for years. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. See, I've, I've read a lot of Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> not B, not C. That leaves us with A. If Hattie wasn't tied up, why would she have her arms out like that? And why would you have the scissors on hand? Truthfully, I didn't figure it out until I got my memories back. Good hit, by the way. But then I remembered. I've seen it. I have done it. Can I take... Ah. There we go. Can I take some measurements? Can you stand with your back to mm, uh, the shelf over there? Hold your arms straight out to the sides. Didn't pick up on that. So here's my story. Tell me if I miss anything. She huffs. You made Hattie's costume when she first came to the circus. Now, unbeknownst to you, she's planning something big. Television. She's going to need lots of new costumes soon, so... She asks you to take her measurements again. There's no wall in the tent, so just like you asked me to stand against the shelf, you asked her to stand against the board with her arms out. That's when you begin talking, and Hattie tells you something that you really, really didn't want to hear. She finally tells you that she's going to leave the circus and you behind. Something comes over you. You look at her. She's still standing there nonchalant like it isn't a big deal. She's waiting for you to measure her and make her a dress, just like you've done before. But it isn't like before. You snap. You reach for the scissors in your utility belt and strike. She never sees it coming. She tries to scream. You cover her mouth with your hand. She tries to struggle, but you hold her in place. That's when you realized. With a weapon in her pose, everyone is going to know it was you. You panic. Perhaps you know there's no other way this could go, but you pull the scissors out. The blood, blood sprays all over her chest, your clothes and the board. Within seconds, she loses consciousness. Her body starts to slump. The blood patterns left behind clearly show she had her arms outstretched. You look at the board and almost laugh. It's too perfect. That pose would have been peculiar for anything except this knife-throwing prop. All those shows you've performed this act together without anyone knowing without anyone seeing you, and you were going to get to hide behind this board one last time. The idea is perfect. You can resist. You tie her arms to the board as she did to Aideen so many times before. And you retrieve a throwing knife. It shouldn't be hard for the mechanic, and stab it back into the wound where the scissors used to be. She's long stopped breathing. You take in the room. No one ever knew you were meeting here. They're all in the dark. No one even knew you were her apprentice. And they never will. Maybe you grab something to change into or to cover yourself. 
and then you leave the tent, toss your bloody clothing, wipe down the scissors and carefully make your way to the back of the stables. Just your luck, Rolf still isn't back yet. He and Aideen got trapped in the rain. And you wait, probably pretending to nap until Echo shows up. Well, do I need to go on after this? Stop. Just stop. You... I knew from the moment Jackie showed up that something was wrong. Oh, since you mentioned it. Of course, I showed up as Jackie, convinced Moses to let me pretend to be Hattie. Of course, I didn't realize at that point he thought I was the apprentice Hattie spoke of. And you didn't know I had a bogus letter, otherwise you'd have been able to tell much sooner. Because you knew that there was nothing going on in the circus, and that Hattie couldn't have known about her fate. But it still threw a wrench in your plan. Now you have a decision to make. Do you do nothing and watch some stupid stranger parade around in your beloved circus? Take the place of your beloved mentor, who you murdered? Or do you do something? That's when a plan formed in your head. You wrote the anonymous note. You even had the balls to deliver it yourself, pretending like you didn't know where it came from. You found a hammer that happened to be lying around. The perfect weapon. And then you waited until just before the clock struck seven. You went to Hattie's train car, must have taken the key from her after you killed her, and hidden the shadows until I showed up. We both know the rest. Hattie knocked me out, you took off the costume that I was wearing, Hattie's costume, and my mask. That's when you found out I was in disguise. You probably tried to figure out what was going on, what I actually looked like, and what I had with me. Maybe you went through my wallet and found my name card. Maybe you didn't. I'm not sure. But the clock was ticking. Hattie was due to appear in the show shortly. So, you put on the costume instead, including the mask. You were going to do the show. That's what she meant for you to do after all. You know all the tricks already. You could certainly pull it off better than this imposter. So you dragged me out to be lying behind the train, threw away the wallet, but kept the gun. Shit, the gun. You still have my gun. She finally moves. She taps her waist twice and smiles viciously. I do. But this is all in our heads, this confrontation, isn't it? Whoa. You woke up! What, um... Chip said you fainted because you're allergic to mallets. That's, um... Uh, no, I just suddenly remembered something. Well, after you pass out cold, he took you back here, but he gotta go back to the show, so I'm stuck watching you. She snickers. You say funny things in your sleep. It's like you're in a courthouse or something. Ahem. Um, so how long was I out? What's going on now? Oh, it's been like two hours. Fake Hattie's on stage doing the closing performance now. What? I need to... I stand up, but my head is still a little fuzzy, so I stumble. Yan narrows her eyes at me. You're not too heavy. If you fall, you're going to crush me like a pancake. So don't do that. I'm just going to dodge and let you hit the ground. I'm fine. If you say so. I need to... I don't know how to put it, so I just gesture towards where the noise is coming from. Well, didn't know you wanted to see the show that much. Shouldn't have fainted. You missed almost everything. Well, then I'd better not miss this. Fine, I'll take you. This way, you've got to come out from, from the back or you'll end up right on stage. All right, all right. Big Top is as crowded as it was at the start of the show. Everyone is enamored with the performance, craning their necks to get a better look at the performers. Right in the middle of the spotlight is her, dressed up in Hattie's costume, donning the mask and even the wig I wore yesterday. She bows to the crowd. They shower her in a sea of thunderous applause and cheers. The performance is almost over. It seems like I'm a step behind, but I'm not too late. Not yet. A step forward and then two. I begin to walk towards the stage. Amidst the celebration, I can see her calm eyes staring back at me as I approach. She knows that I know. She knows why I'm here. And we both know more than one show is coming to an end. Hey, where are you? I don't respond and just keep walking past the front, front row. Some familiar faces standing near the ring seem to realize something is up. Mister? Is that? What's he doing? I think he found who he's been looking for. You mean the, how can it be? 
I'm now standing just outside of the ring, in front of the crowd, face to face with her. The crowd starts whispering frantically. They're clueless. In the middle of the commotion, she moves. Her hand reaches down to her waist, and in a flash, I know what she's doing. Time slows down. One. It's loud, but I can almost hear the rustling of her dress and the familiar sound of metal. Two. I can feel some someone surging forward from the front seats as if trying to pull me away. Three. She aims. Don't move. There's something up with the gun, I think. I don't move. Maybe I'm dead. The gun goes off in a flash, but I feel nothing. Instead of a bullet, confetti explodes into the air like a shimmering snow flurry. The crowd cheers. I let out a quiet breath. She raises the pistol in the air, a gesture that is either a celebration or surrender. Perhaps both. She bows to the crowd again, then approaches me with purpose. I'll see you outside. When I exit the tent, it is pitch black outside. Excited circus audience members can still be seen flowing out of the tent, chatting and gesturing about the performance they'd just seen. I walk further towards the train station to avoid the crowds and await the inevitable. Under the meager light of the starry sky and distant streetlights, I am taking a completely new look at the field. Just like Moses said, all the tents beside the big top are now gone, as if the past two days had all been a dream. From afar, I can see circus workers hustling around, packing up and moving boxes of luggage back onto the train. No matter how the big show went, they'll be in a new city by dawn tomorrow, starting a whole new cycle of performances. I'm lost in thought, until I hear soft footsteps behind me. I don't need to turn around to know who it is. It's me. I know it's you. I didn't intend on the dual meaning, but it seems perfectly fitting. She finally steps in front of me, out of sight from everyone else. She has already changed back to her own outfit, but somehow, when I look at her, I can still feel the eyes behind the mask watching me, as they did last night on the train, as they did when she pulled my gun on me. How did you know? Ah, she's not Scouse. How did you know? The attack last night when everyone was supposed to be on stage. And the scissors. My memory was a bit hazy. Thanks for the head wound, by the way. But once I remembered how you measured me and used the scissors yesterday, well... She doesn't seem surprised or impressed. Or defeated, but simply nods. Ah. But you weren't really planning on hiding this forever in the first place, am I right? To be honest, I don't know. We're both quiet for a moment. We watch people shuffle around in the distance. Can I ask you something? I imagine you've got a lot of questions. I think I've pieced together most of it already. But there's one thing I'd like to hear from you. Why? I don't believe you planned this. Things just got out of control, but why? What really made you break? Did Hattie tell you she was leaving? You know, most apprentices would appreciate their mentors stepping aside and allowing them to take over. She looks away and ignores my question. When I was younger, long before I ran away to join the circus, I lived with my parents. My father was a self-absorbed artist who was angry at everything, including me and my mum. My mother, well, she always tried her best. She never disagreed, never cried, never fought back when she was supposed to take a hit, never stayed on the ground when she had the energy to stand up. She baked me sugar cookies when she could, read me bedtime stories, Took me to the circus when they were in town. She used to draw things for me too. Never on a canvas, but on my bedroom ceiling. On the inside of my jacket, on my socks. I never really loved him, but I loved her. I never really hated him, but I hated her when she left. She shakes her head. I know that makes no sense, but he just... He was... He just was that man. I never knew him to be anything else. It's just like being poor or being a girl. There's nothing you can do about it. For her... I thought she cared. And that's unfair, isn't it? I know she wouldn't have left if he w if he wasn't who he was. But I'm broken that way. I've always hated good people who abandoned me. Far more than I hated bad people who stayed. 
If it were me, I'd probably feel the same way. You can't imagine what running away and finding a home here meant to me. I changed my name too, because I didn't want the name they gave me anymore. The circus became a new family and I was in Wonderland, just like Alice. Tell them I'm really sorry. I hurt everyone. I know I did. You can tell them yourself. I will. I don't know what came over me. I'm sure people say that to you all the time, but I... I still remember it. I've been seeing it in my head all week. I was so excited when she said she wanted to teach me magic. I thought I'd finally get to be a part of, uh, of this. She'd been teaching me for months, every gesture, every little trick. She said I'd make a great partner. She told me to meet her on Monday to bring my kit. She said she'd done, had some great news for me. I thought she wanted me to make her a new costume since the last one was pretty old. And as I was measuring, she started telling me about her great news. She did want me to make her a new costume for a TV show. What's even better, she said, was that I could take over her job. It's a big opportunity, but I'm sure you can handle it. You're super talented, don't ever doubt that. Why else would I choose you in the first place? And I just... It, it all clicked into place. She used me. She planned all of this, pretended like she really cared, so she wouldn't leave the circus behind without a magician, because that would be unprofessional. The morning of the day my mum left, my father was in a great mood, and he was never in a great mood. So my mum asked me to take, asked him to take me out to town. Before we left, she took me aside and asked if I would try to keep him away for longer, because she was trying to prepare a surprise. Turns out, she just needed more time to pack up and run away. I'm sorry. She... I I'm sure it was difficult, but she shouldn't have. No, don't say that. She probably should. Hattie too. I know you're wondering, did Hattie really plan all that, or am I just seeing shadows where the light isn't? That don't matter now. She's dead and I killed her. She did nothing wrong. In fact, if I wasn't the way I am, her great news probably would have been great. I don't know what to say. I had reasons, reprimands, consolations. She's already said all of them for me. Can I ask you a question? Hmm? Yeah, sure. When I pulled the trigger, why didn't you duck? I knew you wouldn't. Well, at least not in the show like that. The circus is your dream, right? It's magic. You might have wanted to kill me under the right circumstances, but I knew you wouldn't ruin everyone's memory of a great show like that. She pauses, stays motionless, but I can see her lashes flickering slightly. After a few quiet moments, she swallows and chokes out a few words. Um... Thank, thank, thank you for letting me in the show like that. You, you didn't have to do that. She wipes her eyes harshly, straightens her shoulders and looks around. For the first time, this young woman... The killer I've been chasing and contending with for days appears lost. So what happens now? I'll talk to Moses. He'll probably call the police if he hasn't already. She nods. Okay. She repeats herself numbly. Okay, I'll... I'll go with you. Mr. Jones. The officers just picked her up. I was told she'll stay in their custody until she gets charged. I nod. I have to thank you for your patience and for your assistance with, uh, everything. Just doing my job. Which includes dressing up as a woman and applying for the magician job. <laughs> Finally figured that out, didn't you? By the way, she told me to return this to you. He slides the silver handgun across the table. Oh, thanks. I almost forgot. I pick the gun back up, but there's something else stuck to it. A piece of folded paper. Uh, this is, uh... She asked me to give this to you. Don't worry. I ain't opened it. What could this possibly be? I unfold the paper. <laughs> I snuck a look at this before, of course, but now it's finished. The lines and shades are fully rendered. Even with a black and white pencil sketch, I could see the hue of the lipstick I was wearing. I cringe and laugh. She's an artist. She probably knows human anatomy more than I thought. I'd bet she started to suspect something about my identity as she was drawing. Looking at Moses' confused face, I show the sketch to him. So, the gun is really yours. It was really you I was talking to yesterday. Yeah, sorry. My name's John, but my friends do call me Jackie sometimes. 
I will say, I'd never have imagined, but you certainly pulled it off. I picked up a thing or two from my friends who work as female impersonators in the Tenderloin. <laughs> nah, he clears his throat. Well, but do have one more question. Technically, you're still my employer by the end of the night, so last chance to ask anything you want. If she... If you hadn't been attacked, what were you planning to do when it comes to your time to put on the big magician show? Good question. I shrug. I've been told my detective thing is a neat party trick. The show is kind of like a big party, right? He coughs disapprovingly. Anyway, I figured if my mind reading trick impressed you, it would impress some people in the audience. So you didn't really have a plan. I prefer to think of it as a calculated improvising. Uh, that's what made me think of the disguise, too, and the letter. Forging a signature? Learn that from some of my other friends. Well, while I might not understand your reasoning for your methods, I suppose I can't argue with your results. Uh, thank you? I mean it, thank you. At least now we can put all this behind us. So I'm guessing you'll be departing for your next stop now? He nods. First train is departing as we speak. But actually, I asked the performers to hold back for a moment. I wanted to talk to them. Right, right. It's important to talk about what happened. Then what happens next? Yeah, that too. I concur, then look around, look at him awkwardly. We've covered everything we could possibly talk about. So, I guess my work here is done. I'll leave you to it. Wait! Ahem. Um, if you don't mind, I actually wanted to ask you to stay for this. Oh, well, um, of course. I... Are you sure? Yes, I hope so. After all, you were a member of our crew, too, for a day. Well, then, of course. Good. Thank you, Mr. Jones. John. They'll have to take down this Ted soon, so come with me. We'll meet the rest of the crew over by the field. Okay. It's now almost completely dark outside, save for the warm lights of the train station. All's quiet. The chill autumn wind carries over the faintest sounds of cicadas buzzing. I look up, and the stars in the sky have never been clearer. I rush a few steps to catch up with Moses, who's been walking in long strides, uncharacteristic of someone of his age. The rest of the group is already waiting for him. They look a little surprised to see me there too, but no one comments. Sorry we're late. Don't worry about it. I'm sure you had plenty to deal with. Right. I can see him steal his nerves and face the group with determination. So I'm guessing you've heard. They glance at each other, and after a few seconds of silence, nod. Thanks to Detective Jones, we were able to identify Alice as, uh, the suspect. She has been collected by the police. I also took the chance to speak to them about Hattie. I'm told the uh, remains will be released to a local funeral home. And since she has no remaining family, it's up to us to make a decision over what to do. He looked at Aideen and Echo meaningly for a moment. If anyone has an opinion about what she might have wanted, you can come speak to me about it in the next few days. Otherwise, I will handle her affairs myself. The group remains silent. A few of them appear lost in thought. I know it's been a hard week for all of us. I appreciate all of you for your help as we navigated this tragedy. Hattie was a member of this circus, and I know it's going to take us more than just a single week to mourn her and accept her absence. Not only that, I know it's going to take a long time for us to process the truth behind everything Alice did. I'm not going to serve you empty platitudes. Things may not get easier. Uh, I'm sorry, but I actually need to speak to you all about another matter. What? He sighs and rubs his brow ridge. Looking deeply pained, the rest of the crew looks alarmed. I was actually hoping to... Well, there's no point in... Uh, I'm afraid there's no good way to say this. Oh, just out with it then. Someone inhales sharply. Rolf hurriedly whispers under his breath. There, go. What? We need to hear it. The sooner the better. You're right. I've been delaying the inevitable, but the truth is... I can't keep the circus running much longer. Everything erupts at once. What? What's that mean? Is it true? <laughs> They've got the same voice. But, uh... Moses raises his hand in a wait motion and everyone shuts up. 
The truth is, Ahsoka's has been in a uh, delicate financial situation for a while. We've been in the black this year, but just barely, and in no small part thanks in no small part thanks to the crowds coming to see Hattie. But now we've not only lost Hattie, but our mechanic as well. It's been pointed out to me by some of our investors that we may have no option other than to declare bankruptcy at the end of the season. Chip perks up at the mention of investors and becomes indignant. Do you mean Richard? Because I'll... I'll... Moses clicks his cane on the ground. You will do what? You will do what exactly? Chip apparently doesn't have the answer. He ducks his head under the, the admonishment, defeated. Moses' tone softens. Don't be silly. I'm sure you all have questions or suggestions, but honestly, if there was any way, wouldn't you think I'd have thought and tried them all a hundred times? I just, uh... And please don't feel like there's anything you need to do to help. The responsibility is on me and me alone. And I'm sorry I failed you. All of you. No, don't say that. Yours is not your... Some of you I brought you into this trade, but all of you still have long journeys ahead. I'm not telling you... I'm not telling any of you this to make you feel miserable. I just wanted you to be prepared for what's coming so you can start making your plans. I'll do everything I can to help. He looks into everyone's eyes. If you want to move to another circus, or if you want to settle to perform in a city somewhere, I know people who might have a few openings. Rolf opens his mouth, but no sound comes out. Moses, though, proceeds as if he knows exactly what Rolf was going to ask. The animals. Hmm. One reason for closing down now, instead of dragging this out when we are deeper in debt, is uh, we won't have to sell all of them if you don't want to. Like I said, I know a few places that might be interested, and I could take care of them. But if you want to keep any of them besides Subsidian, I'll do my best to help you figure something out. But please, consider how much you can afford to take care of them after. I know you, son. Please don't stretch yourself too thin. And Tito, I'll send a letter to your grandmother as soon as possible. Perhaps it's time to go home for a bit. He turns to Yan. I'm most worried about you, little bird. It might be a good time to really think about what you want to do for the rest of your life. Luckily, you'll have your sister with you. I know she'll keep you out of trouble. Big trouble, at least. Aideen laughs, but I can almost hear her choking up. What are you going to do after this? He pauses, as if not expecting that question. Me? Well, I'm going to rest. Maybe finally take the retirement I've been talking about. I, uh, I stand here apologizing that I can't give any of you a better outcome. I know this isn't what anyone wanted. But if you still listen to a few words from this old man, who will soon no longer be your boss, the circus has been my life for more than half a century. This has always been my dream, and regardless of what is about to happen, I'm still incredibly glad that I got to build it. That said, those who've been in the industry for a while might notice that attendance has been declining for years. I've never met a fighter back down from in my life. But sometimes I look at this bright new world with the radio and the television and cinema, and I wonder maybe, maybe time is just not on our side anymore. Perhaps it's just me getting old and nostalgic. There's not enough gas left in me to lead this fight again. You still have decades ahead of you, and who knows how things will go. If I can take this chance as a chance to leave, maybe you should all think about it too. He laughs. Honestly, I'm not sure why I'm keeping you listening to me rambling on about... Perhaps I'm just tired. Perhaps I'm just swayed by my own failure. Forget it. Who am I to say where you should go? You folks can go do whatever you want. Perhaps the sight of Moses doubting himself is so foreign... No one knows how to respond for a while. Surprisingly, it's Rolf who speaks first. We will... <clears throat> think about it, I mean. But, bef um, but before that, I believe our season's... Oh, hang on. <laughs> but before that, I believe our season's not quite finished yet. Good. I thought you people were going to forget all about the shows we still have left. Who forgot? You're an idiot. Moses smiles. Yeah, let's make sure to close out the season. These people deserve a good show. I just hope there are no more surprises. Can't you just, can't you just ask the stars about that? 
I... Ah, gotcha. That's midnight. Sorry, everyone. I believe it's time to go. I think Yan and Aideen went a bit Northern Irish at the end there. I got... <laughs> It was unlike the rest of the game. There was a lot of switching between all the different accents in a short period of time. Anyway, where's this going now? It's a bit, a bit of a melancholy end, that wasn't it? Um, is there anything else to come? Feels like there should be. Oh, after loading everyone back onto the train, Moses stands at the train door and turns to me. Well, I suppose it's time to say our farewells. And thank you, Detective Jones. You've already said it. Not us. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Midnight. Oh, hello. Hey, I'm back. Hey, it's Thief. Glad to hear that, boss. Good to see you too, Ruth. You little crook. Did you commit any sandwich larceny while I was gone? Well, did you? Well, only a slice of ham or two. Careful, I'll have to sentence you to a hundred more kisses on your furry little head. The fearsome thief does not even look slightly intimidated by that grievous threat from the big scary detective. So, what have I missed while I was gone? Well, Mrs. Jones said she was going to drop by. You didn't tell her I was... John Julius Jones, what is that I heard you had gotten yourself into again? Mom, I'm fine, I'm fine. Whoops, I better duck. And there we go. That's the end. Well, that was interesting. I will admit, I didn't see that them, being the bo them both being the same person thing coming. I had figured out that they were acting on different days. Uh, but yeah, I didn't see that it was going to be him in disguise, so that was a good twist. Um, as for the, the murder, I mean, considering it... I mean, I don't know if I was to accuse someone else, whether there was enough there that it would have followed through uh, the logic until... I mean, obviously it wouldn't have been... I don't think it would have been Rolf, because body shape-wise, how could it have been? But it could have been any of the others, including Echo and Chips. So um, I wonder if we had gone down the path of accusing them whether it would have followed through and kind of gone through the motive and opportunity and etc. Um, and, it could, and it could equally have been them. But it feels like going for Alice was the right thing. I, I, I think all our reasoning behind that was sound, which makes it a little frustrating that I couldn't actually get to speak to her and do the alibi thing as Detective Jones. I'm assuming I was meant to be able to do that. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing probably soon after the starting the game um, that we were able to do it. And maybe I didn't take the opportunity to do it at that time because, you know, our action points were very uh, few and far between. Um, assuming that I'd get, to do, get the chance to do it later, but that later never arrived, did it? So it felt kind of weird. It felt like in that sort of section where I was having to come up with the, the, the when, the how and the why. Um, it felt like I was sort of missing stuff, like, because uh, I, I kind of known that she'd been sleeping in the stable, people had mentioned it, but I didn't have an option to select to, to present at that time. But it, it went through anyway. I think we kind of rode our luck a little bit, because we only had one, one chance left before the whole thing may have come crashing down. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was good. I enjoyed that. I think the writing was good. I think uh, the mystery was good. And, you know, if it is something that you can do multiple times and accuse different people and get different um, murders effectively uh, that would be interesting to find out I mean I, probably, I won't do that on the channel and I probably won't do it off camera either but you know I think if you were to play it yourself it might be interesting to go through and try and focus on uh, another suspect and, and maybe see how that plays out and if you do do that you know, let me know in the comments how it went because I'd be very interested to, to find out um, but yeah, I think everything tied up kind of nicely at the end. Um, it took me a little minute just to wrap my head around the... the uh, I'm still not entirely sure I've got the timing straight. It ties into which show Hattie missed. Because it sounds like Jones as Jackie was knocked out on Saturday night. Um, and then woke up as Jones at the station on Sunday morning, which is when his section took place. 
Um, so I don't know if the two guys who were speaking in the big top and the big show about about the timing of that. I don't know. If, maybe it was a slight mistranslation or something. But to me, the way they were saying it, it made it sound like Jackie got knocked out on the Friday. Then whoever took her clothes came in to perform towards the end of that show, and then Saturday night was as planned. That's how it sounded to me when those two guys were talking. Um, so, you know, in the comments, feel free to, to if you if you know better than that, that feel free to explain it, uh, lay out the timing for me a little bit better, because I'm not quite wrapping my head around that. But still, I think even, even despite that, I think it did all tie together quite well, and I really enjoyed playing it. So I'll just say for one last time, thanks very much for, oh, hang on, five years later, let's let this play out. Robinette, The Amazing Hattie Richter, 1923 to 1952. Not knowing when the dawn will come, I open every door. Gosh, can you believe it's been five years? Everyone's doing well after the circus. Mose is in, is in retirement. The rest are all doing their own thing now. And you wouldn't believe what Jan went off to do. I, I got a letter from her once. I'm assuming her means Alice. I don't know what you would have said. I never wrote back. I don't know if I've got the energy to be angry anymore, but I can't find the energy for forgiveness either. Never mind. Let's talk about something else. I went to the cinema last week. You'd have loved that one. And the television programs they have now. They even heard they have ones in colour now, although I've yet to see it. But imagine that. You were right about it all along. Sometimes I turn it on and think what it would have been like if you... If you were on it. So what have you got here? Pretty much everything, if you know what to ask. We got beer, vodka, rum, whiskey, scotch, bourbon, gin, champagne, tequila, rye, lemonade or soda, for those who don't feel like partaking. We got the usual cocktails. Okay, blah, 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 blah. You name it. And if you're looking for something really special, we got a few house specials you can try out. We got the Coney Island Cyclone, studying Scarlet, the Magician, the Phoenix, the Little Swallow. Okay, so these, so the phoenix would be her, the fire act. The little swallow was Yan. Um, I'm not sure what the others are. Maybe they were her tricks. Study in Scarlet, the Colony Island Cyclone. They may have been mentioned in the game. I can't remember specifically. Will you let me buy a drink? No, sorry, I'm working. Come on, you. Oh, buy her a drink. Come on, your boss won't let you have a little fun. I am the boss. Do you want a drink or not? Oh, I guess I'll have a phoenix then. One phoenix coming right up. Wait, there's one last step. Never get tired of seeing that. Change my mind, I don't want this one anymore. You ordered it? Well, I changed my mind, why don't you have it? What's the problem, scared of a little fire? Hmm, tastes amazing. What well, shame you changed your mind, eh? Now get out of my bar. I would like to emphasize to everyone, unless you'd like your mouth and your throat burned, blow the fire out before you drink it. I'm a professional. The rest of you should not. I repeat, not. Try this at home. How can you even be a professional at that? Well, wouldn't you like to know? Aw, oh, everyone's getting a little ending. Aw, oh, this is Tito's. Tito, what are you doing here? Aren't you going to join them? Why? Well, it's fun. People perceive fun differently, and I happen not to find those things fun. Okay, what are you playing with then? Tarot cards. What? Like witchcraft and things? No, it's um, a common misconception. But while many witches practice divination, reading tarot alone doesn't make you a witch. Divination? Where did you get the cards from? Is anyone teaching you this occult stuff? I need to talk to your parents. My parents taught me. What? I, I think it's better if you give the cards to me. Why? Because, because you're too young to understand, but this might be dangerous, okay? It might summon evil spirits. Do you want that? It's not going to. Oh, did you... Whoa, did you say it summons evil spirits? Yes, yes, it's occult magic. Did you say magic? That's wicked. What? Oh, can you do magic? Like I said, it's just divination. Does that mean you can see the future? It doesn't work like that. You ask the deck a question and it gives you guidance. Oh, whoa, can I try? No, I want to go first. I want to know what I'm going to be when I grow up. That's stupid. I want to know if I'm going to marry Marilyn Monroe. That's stupid. She's not going to marry you. Kids, kids, no one's going to do anything with the cards. Tito, please take those home and do not bring them back. 
and I'm going to need to have a talk with your parents. Ah, <sighs> fine. Girl whispers. You're still totally going to bring them, right? Can you do your magic thing for me next time? I won't let her see it, I promise. I know a spot. Okay, if you want. I'm totally going to tell Gracie someone in our school knows magic. She's going to be so jealous. Ah, uh, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, this will be Yan. Little Swallow, you're back on that death trap again. What can I say? It's just so fun. Ugh, if you aren't careful, one day you'll fall over and scrape your knee or break your leg. Oh, don't worry. I'm an expert at balancing my weight. So, how was work today? You know the usual. Rescuing lost cats, trailing unfaithful guys, that sort of thing. Oh, has she become a private detective or something? The boss still putting training wheels on you? Yup. I like the cast, but the guys are boring. Oh, speaking of the boss, I gotta go up. Bye. I wonder if she's working for Jones. Your bike! It's okay. They know no one steals my bike. Oh, this kid. Hey, she does. She's working for Jones. Ruth, thief, I'm back. Miss me? Ruth went home early. Her grandson hit someone in school. Ah, I knew Frankie had it in him. You better not let her hear you taught him to fight. Why? I told him to only do it to bullies. You tell her, you tell his teacher that. So, I've got a case for you. Well, don't tell me it's another missing car. Missing parrot, actually. I thought you'd appreciate a chance to hunt down a fellow avian. Ha, funny. Come on, I want to do something more exciting. I didn't wait all this time to go just chase birds. No, you waited all this time because your sister and I wouldn't let you be a PI at 13 years old. No, she made me go to high school for years. I had to learn to math and I had to write in cursive and I had to read stupid books about idiots falling in love and pretending to be dead and then they actually were dead. I'm sure your teachers appreciated your summary of the great Shakespearean tragedy. Whatever. The point is, I'm just a high school... I'm a high school graduate now. I want to do more than look for parrots. So the poor parrot is just going to stay lost? Well, you can look for him. But I'm sure even Thief can do it. I'm messing with you. No one's looking for a pet parrot. It's a legit case this time. And before you say anything, I will be supervising. Uh, fine. I've got rules, though. Let's hear them. One, let me talk to the clients. Two, no figuring out things before me and then being all smug about it. I can't help that. And three, I get paid on this one. You can have the money if I'm allowed to be smug about things. Really? What? I really like being smug. Deal or not. Fine, deal. To a new case for Detective Yan and her sidekick. Excuse me? Oh, that was sweet, wasn't it? I like that. <laughs> Yan and Jones. Oh, that was it. We didn't get an ending for Roll for Echo. I don't know why. Um, maybe you don't get that, but we did. Maybe it's because we spent most time speaking. We didn't spend that much time talking to Tito because he was only there to give us an AP boost, wasn't he? Um, but we certainly spent quite a long time talking to Aideen and Yan, so that, that may have been why. Um, that was cool. I like the fact that she came to work for us. Oh, that's yeah, that's excellent. Well, I'll just sign off now then. Just say thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be fantastic. As I've said uh, a little while ago, you know, if you can maybe lay out the timing of the knocking out Jackie, waking up as Jones thing for me, just to get it right in my head, because I'm struggling a little bit with the timeline, that'd be great. You know, also let me know in the comments what you thought about the game and the characters and uh, how we the conclusion that we reached. Just be really interested to hear your thoughts. And lastly, if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, would be amazing if you could. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you elsewhere on the channel for other games and other playthroughs. Bye for now.